In the previous episode of the Ute Rack build, we covered the design, the front bar, and made the brackets that hold the rear bar frame. In this episode, we'll conclude the build, finishing the rear bar and the longitudinal bars. Then we'll give the racks a coat of paint to match the colour of the Colorado. The horizontal bar for the rear frame was completed a while back, so all that's left to do is finalise the height of the frame, add some bracing and the tabs for the longitudinal bars to mount to. I said in the previous video that the bars were made from 50 by 4 mm square section tube, but that was a damn dirty lie. I ended up using 50 by 1.6 mm tube to save weight and money. To work out our height, I needed to install the front bar and sit the uprights in place in the brackets. I recruited a helper to hold a straight edge from the front bar to the rear to get that height. The ute has quite a bit of rake when it's unloaded so there's not much point taking level from front to back. So I just made it so the straight edge was parallel to the top of the tray. I then marked the height of the uprights, minus the rear bar, and made the cuts. I put the uprights back in the brackets and clamped the horizontal bar in place, checking to make sure it looked okay before I tack welded them together. It obviously wasn't level, but the bubble was in the same spot on both sides, and that was good enough for me. It all looked good, so I linished the etch primer off and made the tacks. But before I took it back to the bench to weld it all round, I made up some 45 degree braces and tacked them in as well, using my patented masking tape workpiece holding technique. Then I threw it on the bench and gave it a bit of a cleaning, then zipped it all up. Last thing to do was weld on the mounting tabs for the longitudinal bars. But I'll do that when it comes time to make them. Before I could start on the longitudinal bars, I needed to go and get some more tubing. This was a good opportunity to test out the racks and, well, they seemed to work just fine. I bought some extra tubing in case someone needs to make some benches for their shed. Uh, that's a new toy for a future project, just ignore it. I already made the end caps and tabs for the longitudinal bars, or link bars as I'll refer to them from now on, from 50 by 8 mm flat bar, as you may have seen in the first video of the series. But the tabs still needed their holes drilled. After drilling them all with the cordless drill, I realised I really need to recommission my old drill press. To be fair though, this Makita drill has had a pretty rough life and still keeps on working. To make these bars, my plan was to weld the mounting tabs onto the front and rear bars and mount them on the vehicle. Then after welding the link bar end caps to their tabs, I'd bolt them up to their mounting positions, kind of in mid-air. This will let me take a measurement for the link bar tubes and I think it's the most accurate way of doing it. You'll see what I mean in a second. So I welded the tabs onto the caps, jigging them up in the vise with the aid of a magnetic clamp. Then I linished the coating of some of these automotive M12 bolts so I could weld them in place, which wasn't in the original design, but I think will make it easier to mount the bars onto the ute when I need to. I cut a piece of timber to act as a spacer to help position the mounting tabs on the front and rear bars. Matching the centre of the front bar to the centre of the timber spacer, I clamped it to the bar and marked where I'd need to grind off the primer to weld them on. But before grinding anything, I threw this leather welding blanket over the cab to protect the paint from flying sparks. Then I clamped the timber spacer back on and used the magnetic clamps to hold the tabs in place while I tacked them. 
but before I could do that, I remembered I needed some bare metal to attach the workpiece clamp. The tabs were then tacked on one side, and the spacer was removed to tack the other side. Then onto the rear bar. It was the same process, marking the centre, clamping the spacer to mark the tab positions, grinding the primer off, including a spot for the workpiece clamp, and tack welding the tabs. I then implemented the aforementioned plan, bolting the link bar end tabs I finished earlier onto the mounting tabs I just tacked on. First on one side, then the same for the other side. Then I measured for the bar lengths, and cut them. Everything was going well, until the bandsaw blade snapped. Gladly I bought a spare blade when I bought the bandsaw all those years ago. Thanks, past Nick. So I quickly changed the blade and got back to cutting the link bar. I then made sure they fit and used the grinder again to take off the primer and took them back to the U to tack weld them in place. The tubes are super thin and you can melt holes in them pretty easily so the tacks were made with a series of quick spot welds. And it was the same deal with the finished welds. Aiming the weld at the thicker piece, in this case the end cap, while making sure you're still hitting the thin wall of the tube, fusing them together. Here's a close up of the action in real time. and at 400% speed. I also went ahead and finished the welds on the front and rear bars, doing only small beads at once since the welder was still tripping the breaker. And that's all the welding done. The last stage of the build was to lay down some paint on the racks. And we all know that before we can do that, there's a whole lot of prep involved. Starting with the rear bar frame, I took to it with the grinder to smooth off my amateur welds and some of you may have noticed the holes I blew through the upright at the end of the rear bar. I did go back and plug weld them and I ground them down smooth as well. Then I went ahead and sprayed some etch primer on all the bare metal. Then it was the same process with the front bar, the little T-bolts and the rear brackets which also needed a once over with the finger sander to get those hard to reach places. I also prepped the link bars but it seems I forgot to film it. Once the prep was done I set up a makeshift gantry in between the trusses in the shed and used some fencing wire to suspend the parts in the air so I could get them painted without having to handle them. I used bolts in the rear brackets with a nut to use as a point to wrap the wire around. The nuts were then tightened on the wire to keep the parts secure while they were hanging. I did a similar trick with the link bars using two nuts on one of the welded bolts. And lastly I hung the front bar upside down by its mounting tabs. Before spraying the primer, I went over all the parts with some 400 grit sandpaper and then gave it all a wipe down. This old tin of primer needed a good stir before I was happy to spray it on, which I gave it. And then I sprayed it on the parts, giving them two coats in total. When that was done, I gave the spray gun a good clean up and mix up the colour matched base coat. The first layer was kind of a mist coat, lightly covering the parts before spraying on two more coats that were a bit heavier. The mist coat helps to reduce runs in the paint, giving the subsequent coat something to stick to. 
The parts looked quite good at this point, but still needed their final clear coat. The neighbours informed me that they were having a party in their backyard that afternoon, right where my overspray would hit them fair in the face, so I thought I'd be a good neighbour and wait till the next day to spray the final coats, when they're hung over. Back to it the next morning, I mixed up the clear coat using the same mixer from the previous day, which put a bunch of white particles in the clear. Not ideal, but I did have these strainers on hand, which I used to separate those rogue bits of base coat. Note to self, use a clean stirrer next time. The clear went on the same as the base coat, first a mist coat, then followed up with two heavier coats. I'm reasonably happy with the finish, although if I did it again I'd choose an industrial 2-pack rather than the 3-step acrylic system I used. It's generally easier with 2-pack to get a shiny finish off the gun than with acrylic, but for a set of racks it looks pretty good. Finally I decided while I was at the shop to pick up a spray can of this bed liner because I thought it might give the top surface of the bars a bit of extra protection when loading stuff onto them. So I gave the top coat 24 hours to dry and sanded the top surface of all the bars, gave them all a clean and taped up the areas where I didn't want the bed liner. I was rushing to get it done while my little man was having his nap so I worked as fast as I could and hoped for the best. Not the greatest plan I've had but I got it all prepped in mass and the first coat on before he woke up. I gave them two more coats that evening after mum came home. I found a bit of bleed through after taking off the masking, which tends to happen when you rush things. I'll try to clean them up with turpentine or something at a later date. For now I have to get this video edited before my self-imposed arbitrary deadline. There was a rush to get the racks back on the ute and take some shots before Jade had to take the little man to his swimming lesson. What I've learned from this project is that it's difficult to work on a vehicle when someone else needs to use it. We made it work though and I'm pretty happy with the result. I want to clean up that bed liner bleed through and I'll get some rust converter on those crust tubes in the headboard over the weekend. But it's not going to make the video. I've made a PDF of the plans for the racks available for free on my website, although I've deliberately left some dimensions out so that the design could be adapted to any sort of ute or pickup truck. Thanks for watching to the end, I really do appreciate it. If you liked the cut of my jib and reckon I deserve a beer for my troubles, check out my PayPal link in the description to make a one-off donation. Also, if you're in the market for some reasonably priced gear for photography and videography, click my affiliate link with Newer and check out their wares. Here's cheers.